Welcome back to Frank's Workbench, where we're cutting corners and burning calories. There's only one way to connect the end grain of two pieces of wood to make a corner. That's a dovetail. Some people would disagree with that. They would be wrong. I've used several templates or jigs to lay out dovetails, and for the last couple of years, I've used this really nice, expensive one. Usually people say something is worth it if it's just as good as something more expensive. Well, let's one-up that. How about something that's cheaper and actually better than the more expensive thing? So here we go in the beautiful corner of the garage, looking at pretty much my entire workshop at the moment, and I'm pulling out a stick of beautiful walnut. One of the absolute best woods for anything, and yeah, it smells like money, so it's perfect for this shop project. It'll still be pennies on the dollar compared to buying one. I'm eyeballing this board, looking for the flattest, squarest edge and face. I don't want to do stock prep on the whole thing when I'm only going to need a small piece cut off. And I think I've got it, so I give it the old bench test. One edge rocks from a hump in the middle, and the other side doesn't. This one's a no-brainer. So I cinch this sucker down in the vise and hop to it. When it comes to hand planes, one of the most common ones is a number 5 jack plane. And it's the one that I use the most, but when it comes to flattening the edge of this 2 inch thick board, I could do it with this plane no problem, but these blades are cambered, they taper on the edges, so really I would be taking a few shavings on one side, then a few on the other, and then right down the middle. With a wider plane, like a 5.5 or a 6, or in my case I have a number 7 jointer plane, the wider blade makes this a cakewalk. As always, I hit the sole of the plane with a bit of paraffin wax. I bought a block of it at Hobby Lobby when I first started doing hand tools, and that same chunk of wax is still going strong. This edge started off pretty much square, so I'm really just checking to make sure I didn't screw anything up, because we all know half of woodworking is just fixing your mistakes. After petting the wood, I tune up the face, and I only need one good square face and edge. The other sides are going to be cut off anyways. So I take my time with it, enjoying the joys of the hand plane and try to dial it in nice and tight. Once this is as squared up as a math problem, I use the marking gauge to start cutting it to size, and I want it around 2 inches long, which might seem like a bit much, but you'll see the reason for that in a bit. And here's a little shop tour for you guys, and I think it's the purple bike that really makes it. Yes sir, this is all highly professional woodworking here. So now to rip this down that marking gauge line. I've got two hand saws, this one's the rip saw, it's got bigger teeth, it's used for cutting down the grain of the wood. To try to keep it straight, I start on the top, and then drop the saw so it's cutting up at an angle. Then I just flip the board around in the vise and do the same thing from the other side. On these cold winter days, nothing like a bit of hand sawing to keep from freezing in the garage. Really, there's nothing like a bit of hand sawing for some of these one-off type of cuts. This is one of my two full-sized hand saws. It's a rip saw, 5.5 points per inch, 22 inches long. Now to cross cut this little section off. One of Walnut's superpowers is making pencil lines disappear, so either a pen or a knife line makes it a lot easier to see. Now I cross cut this chunk out, and it may look like the same saw I was using before, but I have two hand saws. The other was a rip saw, this one's a cross cut. It's got smaller teeth that are sharpened a little bit differently. And now I sweep this stuff off. Little known cleaning fact, I worked as a nighttime janitor cleaning banks when I was in college, and my wife could never understand why I would never want to clean the bathrooms at home. Anyways, I cut this chunk oversized, not really thinking about it, and now you can see me here in deep contemplation, pondering the circumstances of life. So I went ahead and cut it down now, rather than later, but it's kind of an awkward size, since there's just not that much material to be holding on to, but I didn't lose any fingers and it worked out okay. So I mark this up with a marking gauge set to about 3 8 of an inch. By the way, 3 8 of an inch is like the magic woodworking number. Quarter of an inch is too weak and fragile. Half an inch looks clunky. Three eighths is where it's at. If you've been following since I moved into this corner of the garage workspace, then you know I set up shop, built this workbench all using just a few basic tools that I'm doing everything with, and this dovetail saw is the one that I'm using for any fine or accurate cuts. So after cutting the bulk of it, I just trim it up a bit with a chisel and dial it in right in that corner to clean up any little bit that's left. 
This is actually the kind of stuff that's most dangerous when it comes to hand tools. That chisel popping through and slicing into a finger is a pretty common hand tool injury. And now I do a check to make sure it's pretty close to square on the inside. I was surprised at how good this one came out right off the saw. And it should be pretty close, but it's not like absolutely super critical that it's perfect or anything like that. But if it's way off, you know, just take care of it. I like my workbench just like my truck. Not so nice that I never want to do anything with it. I'm marking right on the bench 1 inches over, 7 inches up. This is going to give me a 1 in 7 ratio, which is the correct angle for dovetails. Some people say 1 in 6 for softwoods, 1 in 8 for hardwoods, but I just like 1 in 7 for everything. I scoot my walnut template over to match the corner to the corner of the pencil line, then transfer the line. Then I thought I'd be able to cut that right off on my bench hook, made of solid cherry by the way, but that doesn't actually work out. Look how the saw glides like it's sliding on ice. It's not cutting because take a look at this, the brass back is hitting the top and stopping it from going any further down. I guess this is where all the guys with the pull saws will get their told you so's on me. I just had to turn it in the other direction and cut it down at an angle. This clearly turned into quite the hack job, but nothing a little chiseling and block planing can't take care of. Doesn't need to be perfect right now anyways, gonna dial this in to the correct angle using a flat sheet of sandpaper later on. By the time this thing was done, if somebody had walked into the shop, they wouldn't be sure if I was making a dovetail template or practicing drawing straight lines. This machinist square matches up right with my Starrett. And now let's examine my expensive dovetail marker. Easing it up right to that line and look at that, there's a gap in the bottom. This one is off by just a little bit, and I'll admit it works just fine, and that amount of error is probably less than the inevitable amount of error just from hand cutting dovetails. But errors stack up, they add up, and on bigger projects they seem to multiply. Here's where we are right now with the walnut template. Pretty dang bad. Right here in the knuckle, the corner needs to come down a bit, so I pull out a bit of sandpaper and have at it. Pulling like this instead of going back and forth helps keep it flat instead of ending up with a rounded edge. Checking now and then to see when it's getting close. This one is definitely getting there. Keep in mind checking from the outside like this may or may not line up. That depends on the sawing from earlier so check it against a line, that's the best way. Now the other side was a total mess. Super high on the far side and low down there at the corner. But no big deal, I got jacked up on a bunch of coffee and look how fast the sanding went. Being that bad off, I really should have just hit it with a plane or a chisel. The perfect finish for this is tongue oil because any sort of building finish, which is one that adds a layer on top of the wood, could mess up the nice angles that I just spent time trying to dial in. So I gooped it up, waited a little while, and then wiped it down with a paper towel. It's a great foolproof finish and I've used the same finish on a lot of furniture work too and I love it. Earlier I said to make it 2 inches long. The reason for that is a design feature that I adopted from the other template. Some people like to stack two boards and cut dovetails for both boards at the same time. It makes a longer line and that actually makes it easier to cut straight. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys on the next one.